Tonight, the NSA's plan to infect millions of computers. Yahoo gets help to fight Google. And what did we learn from South by Southwest this year? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 42 for Wednesday, March 12th, 2014. It's the answer to everything. Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Jira, an Atlassian product. Jira is the product management solution for teams planning, building, and launching great products. To learn more about Jira and try it free for 30 days, visit Atlassian.com slash TN2. I'm Sarah Lane, and before we get to today's top stories, we have a bit of a birthday to celebrate. 25 years ago, Tim Berners-Lee wrote the first draft of a proposal that went on to become the World Wide Web. Today, Berners-Lee spoke again, telling The Guardian he believes the web needs an online Magna Carta to protect the web's independence and that it had come under increasing attack from governments and corporate influence. Said Berners-Lee, quote, Unless we have an open, neutral internet we can rely on without worrying about what's happening at the back door, we can't have open government, good democracy, good health care, connected communities, and a diversity of culture. It's not naive to think we can have that, but it is naive to think we can just sit back and get it. On that note, let's get into the tech feed. Top secret documents, previously classified files, and previously provided by whistleblower Edward Snowden and published by The Intercept at firstlook.org, contain new details about surveillance technology the National Security Agency has developed to infect potentially millions of computers worldwide with malware implants. With this technology, the NSA could break into targeted computers and collect data from foreign internet and phone networks. GCHQ, which is the British intelligence agency, appears to have quite a hand in the implant development process, which was originally created to track a few hundred elusive targets. The documents show how the NSA has accelerated this initiative over the last 10 years or so by automating processes previously handled by humans. The automated system, codenamed Turbine, is designed to, quote, allow the current implant network to scale to large size by creating a system that does automated control implants by groups instead of individually. Well, Yahoo has teamed up with Yelp to help it compete against Google in the ongoing search wars, of which it is quite far behind. Financial terms weren't disclosed in the deal, but the search partnership with Yelp will integrate results from the Yelp app, such as user reviews, business information, star ratings, and Yelp photos, and appear on the right-hand panel of Yahoo Search going forward. The listing will appear in the results for Yahoo Search, as well as within Yahoo Maps for desktop, smartphone, and tablet users in the U.S. Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer has said that contextual search could provide people with more personalized content by detecting signals from their surroundings and would be a focus going forward. Apple's streaming music service, iTunes Radio, launched with iOS 7 last year as a tab within the iOS music app. A new rumor, though, has it breaking off into its own app. 9to5Mac is reporting today the new app is in testing. This is according to anonymous sources. A standalone iTunes radio app that comes preloaded on iOS could give it better presence against streaming app competitors like Pandora and Spotify that are already household names. Speaking of Spotify, the company recently acquired the Echo Nest, we reported it here on TN2, which uses data to help create music recommendations for streaming sites. Streaming music competitor Ardio, which also used the Echo Nest's API, says it will discontinue the arrangement. Ardio CEO Anthony Bay explained to CNBC and said, quote, as far as we're concerned, they were a good partner, but we have other good partners and we'll move on. So we'll stop using that source of data and use other sources. Meow. Coming up, Angry Birds grows up to a real-life role-playing game. And up next is Josh Rubin from CNN to tell us what's different with South by Southwest these days. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Jira, an Atlassian product and the world's most powerful and customizable project management system. It easily captures and organizes your workflow so you can take action on what's important. You can stay up to date with the activity going on around you. You can also organize and prioritize your team's issues, their features, bugs. Give your team a simple intuitive interface to collaborate with each other in real time. Integrate your planning documents, your backlog, your issues, your code repository. It's all on one platform. 
You can get notifications via email, chat, at mentions, RSS, whatever your hearts desire, and monitor streams of activity and your dashboards. Also expand with thousands of Jira add-ons, including test management, time tracking, and hundreds of other uses. Jira's integration with Git allows teams to focus their code from development all the way through delivery in one single system. It's flexible, it's simple enough for a five-person startup, and powerful and reliable enough for a 100,000-person enterprise. It's used by over 25,000 companies, including 70% of the Fortune 100 and even NASA. Go to Atlassian.com slash TN2 for more information on Jira. Monthly plans start at $10 a month for up to 10 users, and you can try it free for 30 days. Remember, that's Atlassian.com slash TN2, and select Try It For Free. All right, joining us now is Joshua Rubin, a producer at CNN in Austin, Texas, who uh, is just catching up on sleep, I assume, after a long interactive has finally wrapped up. Hello, Joshua. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. You know, we were talking a little bit before the show, and I said, you know, it's hard. It's it's hard to know exactly how the conference has changed when you're not actually there. But you live in Austin. You you live and work in Austin. And how do you think 2014 has changed this landscape of of a huge tech conference in the U.S.? You know, I think South by this is my fourth South by Southwest, and you could really watch the pivot uh, begin last year and continue on to this year. South by really burst onto the national scene with the launch of Twitter, as everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And from there on, everyone from Silicon Valley, New York International, all thought that South by Southwest, oh, that's the place you have to go to launch the next big thing. That's not really what South by is about. It, it did very well through social and did very well through things like Twitter, Foursquare. But at its core, South by is actually about conversations about tech. It's about it's not about those tools specifically that you take and, and to wow and the brand identification. That's all That's all part of what South by is. But at its core and what they're getting back to is all of the tools that are developed by Silicon Valley, all of the conversations that are happening around the world about tech. Once a year, they all come to Austin. Everybody gets together and they try to see how do we take all of this stuff and turn it into culture. And that's the importance. And that's that's kind of the purpose that South by serves now. Well, what about uh, what about a startup who would like to make a big splash at the conference? Is the landscape of apps, particularly social apps that rely on a lot of people in one place, too crowded now to, to make a dent? Can you still do that? I, it's I, Banter tried to do that with their launch at South by this year. And I, I you know, I didn't hear much about it. It's social is if not mature, is now just a part of everyone's life. You're trying to make a big splash on something that people now take for granted, that, that is a part of everyday culture. So it's, it's not necessarily, you know, you'd have to have something really, really innovative to really break through some of the noise at South by now. Two of the big uh, talks that uh, that were uh, widely anticipated and followed were Julian Assange's, Edward Snowden's. Both were remote. Neither of the mm -hmm. the gentlemen were actually at the conference themselves, and and clearly focused on 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 privacy, encryption, uh, protecting yourself from from government entities. How does that fit into the the purpose of South by moving forward? Do you think that there's going to be more of an emphasis on 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 the the protection of citizens, let's say, in 2015? Not necessarily. Uh, look, this was a very important conversation to have, and this was actually a really funny thing to watch because you, I was sitting in the room with Snowden speaking, and I was watching as the audience sat in rapt attention and stood up and applauded in righteous indignation against the government and then left the Snowden hearing to head to their next panel, which was likely about how to monetize all of that great data that their company has been gathering over the course of the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> the tech community is talking out of both sides of its mouth when it comes to privacy right now. And they seriously need to sit back and say, okay, this isn't about the future. This isn't about some, you know, theoretical idea. The government is spying on us and companies are turning people into products. Is privacy real? Or once you sound off a thought outside of your head, does it belong to the universe? We, we need to have these conversations. I we don't, certainly don't know what the answer is. So... It, if the tech community is to be taken seriously, they need to talk about this because it's not a matter of trusting them to make the tools to save us or protect us from government spying because those tools will put the data analytics companies that they're trying to get jobs at out of business. 
What are your thoughts on the latest revelations that the NSA is using phony Facebook accounts and 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 spam emails to try to infiltrate more and more accounts of of regular citizens? Are we shocked? Are we surprised? I mean, I, I don't take us. A stance one way or the other. They're a government agency that's been set up to, if not spy on everyone, to gather data. And we should not be surprised when they go out and they gather data. If you don't want your private data, you know, out there, be very careful where you put it. That's, I mean, it, there's there's a modicum of personal responsibility that's really coming into all of this. And and that was a big thing that that Snowden and uh, a few other people were saying at the conference, like you don't necessarily have to display everything out there. Well, this is obviously an ongoing conversation. Thanks for taking a few minutes to talk with us. Joshua, tell folks where they can follow your work online. Uh, you can follow me at Josh Rubin, CNN. Uh, and anytime you're in Austin, stop by. <laughs> Sounds good. I will hit you up for barbecue if I'm there next year. Done Thanks. and done. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Finally, for something completely different, the Angry Birds franchise is not only never going to go away, but parent company Rovio is going to take things up a notch with a turn-based role-playing version. That's right, Rovio released a teaser video a few days ago, but today has some new details on what the game will actually be like, like the fact that it'll focus heavily on narrative. That's a big part of any successful RPG, historically anyway. Rovio says combat will be turn-based. There'll also be a challenging end game, as well as a crafting system that will give players the ability to build weapons and armor and potions. Resources will be strewn throughout the game and also available to purchase, which sounds like a little bit of an in-app micro transaction system. Good luck, Rovio. You probably don't need it. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us feedback, questions, comments at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.